There is a very particular context and backdrop to the discussion we're having here on LGBTQI plus uh, rights and pride. Um, and that is the fact that one of the most marginalised and oppressed sections of the LGBTQ community has been subjected to the most appalling, unjustified and untruthful attacks over three days on our nationally publicly owned broadcaster, RTE, for which we pay all of us through our licence fee. That's the context and reality of this discussion. Day after day after day, representatives of a fringe hate group of transphobes, let's be honest, that's what they are, were allowed to dominate our airwaves. Their aim was to peddle transphobia, including lies about the trans community, lies about the history of trans rights in this country, and lies about the National Women's Council of Ireland. In this, they were aided and abetted by a particular broadcaster who has a notably terrible record on the rights of marginalised uh, people. Deputy, now, look, I, I, uh, I don't want to interfere in this debate, but it's not appropriate to make reference to somebody who's readily identifiable and make any sort of charges against that person when they're not here to defend themselves. So I'd ask you to desist from that, please. Okay. I, w what I would encourage people to do is to read a really excellent article put up online, I think yesterday or the day before, by um, an activist, an incredible activist called Izzy Kamikaze. It's on the, the Beacon website. And Izzy investigated what happened and effectively wrote this revealing piece about the background to the particular witch hunt on that particular programme against trans people. And she shows quite clearly how pretty much everything that the transphobes were allowed to say on the show was simply untrue. So lie number one was that they were excluded from the National Women's Council AGM for wanting to, quote, ask questions about the NWCI's position on the supposed removal of the word women from maternity legislation. What actually happened was that they, the transphobes, put out a press release the day before announcing that they were going to disrupt the AGM in order to stop a trans woman from being democratically elected to the National Women's Council board by its membership. That's what's in the press statement that they put out themselves. They aren't members of the National Women's Council because they obviously have no track record on women's rights and exist purely to foment hate against trans people. The second lie that they peddled was that the National Women's Council supports erasing women from the new maternity legislation. In fact, the National Women's Council position is to use inclusive language to broaden those included, including, of course, women, but also uh, trans men and non-binary people. Lie number three was the idea that is, is kind of out there now, that the Gender Recognition Act was somehow snuck in without a proper debate, when in fact it was extensively debated, both inside the doll. Remember the debates we had in the doll and outside the doll. There were over 240 articles published about it at the time. The problem for the transphobes, of course, is that we had the Gender Recognition Act and clearly the sun and the sky did not fall in. It was not something that was quietly lobbied for by elites in the corridors of power. It was actually fought for from below by people struggling, particularly personified by the heroic Lydia Foy. Thankfully, these transphobic ideas do not have much public support at all, I believe, in this country. Um, but it's not just the national broadcaster that are doing their best to change it. It's much of the rest of the mainstream media as well. Um, Jenny Maguire, a trans woman who is the gender equality officer for Trinity College Students' Union, uh, responded, quote, we have seen Irish media getting ever more open about their transphobia. We have to call it out wherever we see it. There is no balance in platforming those that wished I didn't exist as a trans person. So upsetting and troubling to see. I agree. 
Many people have already cancelled their subscriptions or terminated working relationships with the Irish Times due to its repeatedly publishing transphobic content. We have, and I won't name them, but a coterie of newspaper columnists who were really bent on aping their British transphobic counterparts who love nothing more than to whine about their freedom of speech being threatened whenever any regular person takes exception to the views that they have put forward. And any regular person without the benefit of a national newspaper column disagrees with how they have chosen to use their freedom of speech. And in reality, what it is, is transphobic clickbait. Uh, wealthy media organisations, it's a global phenomenon, toying with trans people's lives for the sake of advertising uh, revenue. The case of the former CEO of Tenny, Erin Carroll, uh, who was subjected to what the Guardi told her was a credible death threat uh, and subsequently left the country shows just how serious this is for trans people. It isn't some abstract, academic, interesting debate. This is about people's lives. Two gay men were brutally murdered in Sligo just in April. A non-binary person was recently attacked on the streets of Dublin. We have to get real and speak about the reality of the oppression and discrimination that trans people uh, face. Mortality rates worldwide that are twice that of cis people uh, because at bottom of suicide and violent attacks and murder. Over 50% of uh, trans and non-binary young people in the US have said that they have uh, considered uh, suicide. We know that from the Speaking from the Margins report from Tenney in Ireland, 76% of respondents had self-harmed prior to transition and 81% had considered, had considered, uh, or had considered doing uh, so. Um, and that's the consequence of a society which denies their existence and with debates and then denies their existence, their, uh, their reality. And the situation with RTE also illustrates the problems for activists with relying on corporations for sponsorship. Dublin Pride has become very reliant on corporate sponsorship, um, including until recently uh, with RTE, as well as a host of multinational co corporations who would have had nothing to do with it when homosexuality was illegal and homophobia was rampant and normalised. They include companies with terrible track records on workers' rights and human rights, like Amazon and Nestle, numerous banks and financial companies, and even an oil company. Uh, the hypocrisy of these companies is very striking. I'd like to urge everybody to support the recently launched campaign for trans rights, trans equality uh, together. I intended to be at the, the launch, but for COVID struck me down. Um, and I would call on the government to immediately implement all of the issues and the demands that they are raising. They include for gender identity and expression to be expl explicitly included as protected grounds in the Equality Act for the gender recognition process to be opened up to include under 18s, for increased funding for the National Gender Service, which, is recently, uh, which currently has an outrageous waiting time of five years, and for the immediate reintroduction of health services for trans children and adolescents. Um, we also urgently need to have full separation of church and state to ensure that trans health care can be provided wherever it is needed, and not be subjected to the archaic prejudices of the Catholic Church that still controls so much of our health service. We need to have, we've been pushing for, campaigning for, progressive, objective, LGBTQI plus, inclusive relationships and sexuality education universally provided in schools, regardless of the religious ethos of those schools. In reality, of course, we think we should have full separation um, and therefore um, should not uh, have uh, religious uh, schools. Um, that's necessary to cut across the homophobic uh, and transphobic bullying, which still exists, transphobic in particular, quite prevalent, unfortunately, in schools. Um, you need education to deal with these things. It's not the only way you deal with them, but it's a vital way of dealing with them. And at the moment, the whole issue of religious ethos is an obstacle uh, to that. We need to protect the mental health and lives of our, our LGBTQ plus uh, young people um, and kick the church out of our education system. Finally, I just want to encourage everybody to attend Pride events acro over, across the country. I look forward to attending Dublin Pride on Saturday. Um, 
and to encourage people to get out, to campaign, to fight, to remember that Pride is a protest, to express solidarity with the LGBTQ plus community, um, including a particularly reference, I think particularly important this year, is trans and intersex Pride, which is taking place in Dublin on the 16th of July. Thanks. Thank you, Deputy. Deputy.